President Cyril Ramaphosa has approved the Judicial Matters Amendment Act of 2023. The bill aims to amend numerous acts which are administered by the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development and are intended to address mostly practical and technical challenges in various uh, pieces of legislation. For more on this, we now speak to the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Ronald Lamula. Minister, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. I want to go through the provision around um, the expansion of of a criminal records that were received for people um, who were convicted during the height of COVID-19 and contravention of um, the measures, the COVID-19 measures that were put in place. Does this mean that now that the act has been assented immediately, all of those criminal records are expunged? Uh, good morning, Adrian, and to all the viewers. Indeed, um, that is what it means is, uh, is that uh, we will now undertake um, the police and the justice will undertake the process to expunge all those uh, criminal records. As we speak, if anyone, anyone who was uh, convicted of uh, those disaster management regulations um, is now supposed to be cleared of, um, of all those um, uh, records. Uh, that person should no longer have any criminal record. If they find themselves with the record, they must uh, follow the process with the SAPS and also the Department of Justice to, to, to be cleared. But it, particularly if you find that um, maybe there has been a, a breach or he or she has not yet been cleared uh, by the process that we're undertaking. Yeah. What does the process then entail and how would the person know whether or not their a criminal record has been expunged? Yeah, we, the process, um, the, the ACPS and justice uh, are now uh, immediately after the signing of the, of the bill into an act undertaking the process to clear everyone. And um, the, I think the people that are aware that they were um, uh, under this, um, uh, with the criminal record under the disaster management uh, regulations, uh, we will uh, encourage them to also check uh, and verify their criminal records so that they, they, they will see whether they've been cleared or not. And if they are not, therefore, there they will be a process to be undertaken to help them to clear. Yeah. So is this irrespective of whether the person has um, paid the admission of guilt fine? Yes. Um, all the DMA uh, um, uh, criminal records have now to be expunged. Okay. Uh, that is the that is the decision uh, in terms of the law. Yeah. Are there any other criminal offences um, that would fall under this particular provision that the minister is also allowed to expunge? The other provisions we, we will have to uh, put a process of, um, of regulations that will then put a category uh, of expungement that, uh, for example, to say after five years it will automatically expunge for those that have paid the guilty fine uh, and so forth. So that is what we still have to, to properly clear with now the act in place. We will soon put that into, into motion. Um, as we are aware, at this stage, the only way of um, expunging a criminal record is through a process of, uh, of pardon. But now the bill has uh, simplified uh, our job where we can now expunge the records, uh, particularly after a particular period of time, without having to undergo the laborious process of, um, of, um, of a presidential uh, a pardon. So it will now be done by operation of law. Okay. Um, then also... So look this is really... Simplified our work. Okay, it has simplified fight, fight, fight the work that you're doing. Then the repeal of the common law relating to a crime of defamation. What does this mean going forward? And also for cases that are currently before the courts, I don't know if there are any matters that minister is aware of that are before the courts in relation to defamation. What does this then mean for these particular cases? Um, there, there, there is still a, a defamation um, a, 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 a sue or level uh, that is still there. But what it means is that um, it is no longer um, uh, the way um, um, we have always done it under the under the, the, the common law, where there has also been a situation where 
a, a journalist will just be labeled for having uh, defamed without proper justification. So it will now be done still, but there must be clear um, uh, evidence of intent to defame and so forth. So that is how it, it, it properly defined. It's a bit technical, but it also helps to um, align our, um, our issues of defamation with the Constitution. Oh, okay. Um, then also looking at um, the recommendations and following up on the recommendations of the State Capture Commission of Inquiry, um, how is the amendment responding to those? The amendment is responding in respect of, in particular, the private sector. Um, as you are aware, mostly now the, the, the Act has been more uh, leaning uh, the prevention and the combating of corruption or corrupt activities more on the public sector uh, to, to prevent uh, and to stop corruption and so forth. This now also places a duty on the, on the private sector that um, the people working in the private sector or running private sector companies also now have got a duty to prevent and also to stop uh, corruption from, from happening. So this duty has now been placed on both sides, the public and the private sector companies. Uh, but, but doesn't PRECA already deal with that? N not to the extent that was um, uh, 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 helpful. Uh, as you are aware, it was only placing a duty to, to report. But this one also places a duty from preventing it and from stopping it from, 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 from happening. So that is a bit of a technical kind of, a, of, a, of an amendment but it's a very important amendment because it also moved towards ensuring that uh, also the private sector has a duty to prevent it. Yeah. Okay, Minister, let me just quickly ask you a question um, that flows from one of the decisions that was taken at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry, which eventually led to the conviction of a former president, Jacob Zuma. You may have seen in the, in the news that um, the MK party is appealing a decision that was taken by the um, IEC that uh, the former president is not eligible uh, to be on the voters roll, rather to be on a ballot paper, considering the conviction that has taken place. They have filed papers in the Labour Court and arguing, um, in essence, that the decision that was taken around the remission actually means that the, the president Labour was pardoned. Is it the Labour Court or the... Uh, apologies, the Electoral Court. the Labour Court? The Electoral Court. Yes, yes. Apologies, I, yes. Meant the, I, I meant to say the Electoral Court. Sure. Um, that yes. according to their interpretation of the decision that was taken by the president is that it actually meant that um, the president has pardoned the former president. Is that your understanding as well, Minister? Yeah, I think um, at this stage for me, Adrian, I will not want to enter into that space because um, the matter is now subject to this. We will have to allow the, the matter to take its, uh, its course in the in the electoral court. What I can explain um, uh, in general is that um, because we are dealing with expungements, as, uh, as, I'm, as, I'm, I'm, as I'm speaking to you, the Judicial Matters Amendment Act is aimed to expunge a particular category of criminal records. If that record is expunged, therefore you have got no criminal record. But for example, um, as you are aware, the president from time to time remit uh, offenses um, like uh, the remission of offenses uh, related to people who are in prison to ease overcrowding and so forth. Uh, that does not um, expunge the criminal record, but it enables and makes you eligible to be released on parole or for or correctional supervision and so forth. So yes. those are the general powers that sometimes the president exercise. Okay. Um, and then another matter flowing from the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. Um, the Gupta brothers, um, do you remember this time last year you were first informed um, that the UAE had actually released them? Um, I don't know what other update do you have, um, Minister, around um, securing the arrest um, and the extradition of the Gupta brothers? Do you even know where they are? Yeah, I can state that um, uh, nothing much has uh, come out of it because of the lack of cooperation from the UAE. 
as you will remember in the last uh, update or briefing, we did state that there is a number of questions that we have sent to the UAE that needs to clarify us what went wrong with our application because from our side we believe we have complied with everything and uh, they have not responded to several correspondence and not the ball aimed to get that clarity so it makes it difficult for our central authority nor the prosecuting authority to resubmit another claim without knowing what went wrong because if we resubmit it might fall short of the same challenges if we are not clarified so that is where we are, and uh, we continue to pursue the necessary um, legal avenues, including the, ne the necessary international forums yeah. that could help uh, the country to fi come to finality on this matter. And I believe that uh, we will uh, still find finality. Do you know where they are? It is, um, in terms of our international law, um, the last site is the UAE and hence we continue to pursue them with regards to the UAE. And as you are aware, there is still a red notice that is um, could alert us if they are in any other country except the UAE. So for us, uh, in line with the law, for us, they are still in the UAE, and that is where we are supposed to pursue them. Yeah. A final one, Minister. Yesterday, your... your um uh, predecessor, uh, Nosibio Mapisa Ngakul, appeared in, in court yesterday. Um, and one of the reasons that she argued why she shouldn't be um, taken to prison was because of the deplorable state of the prisons and also speaking about the sexual violations and so forth. What's the minister's take on the state of our prisons? Um, the state of our prisons, we run them in line with the Nelson Mandela rules. Um, that are universally accepted and by the United Nations. So that is the state of our prison. And as you are aware, there is also an inspectorate that is responsible for our prisons uh, across the country. So that is how we, we handle them. And from time to time, we deal with complaints and we have got mechanisms to, to resolve them. Yeah. So is there a true reflection that you heard yesterday from your predecessor? I will not want to comment on a matter that is uh, currently live in court because I believe that um, the court is better placed to deal with that because that is where the presentation was made to deal with the matters. But what I can comment is that our prisons are run in line generally with the, with the, with the Nelson Mandela rules that they are expected to comply with and uh, from time to time we are subjected to the processes of the inspectorate including the United Nations um, uh, conventions. As I've said, the standard of prisons across the globe is the Nelson Mandela rules and our prisons accord yeah. with that standard. And that inspectorate will now also have its own budget according to this amendment to the Correctional Services Amendment Act. Yes, um, and that is in line with the Sonkel judgment to, for the uh, inspectorate to be run uh, autonomously or independently and have its own means to uh, carry out the necessary inspections if and when necessary and when they, are, they have to undertake in line with the legislation that governs the inspectorate. Thank you so much for your time. That was the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services there, Ronald Lamola, uh, speaking to us about um, the new amendments that have been assented by the President of the country.